The next thing that happened was, uh, Curia went and talked to the nurse about the operation, and after asking if anything strange happened during the surgery, was told, no, nothing strange happened before there, but, uh, he did give Bandai a wonder, no, Bandai, give Emu a Bandai Wonder Swan color after the, uh, surgery, which was hard to get at the time. Uh, they said that Kyotaro was a role model for other doctors and everybody trusts him. Yeah, I mean, I already said my bit about this, where it's like, it's probably just him being a good doctor and a good guy, but, like, maybe it's a small bit of chance there's something in that Wonder Swan, but I don't uh, know your guys' thoughts. We also get around to the that seems to almost be the main word of this seg, I guess, chunk of episodes, which is trust. Cause trust is coming up a lot. Yeah, you can definitely see the gears moving around in Kiria's mind after seeing just how genuinely that nurse trusts the doctor. And he's like, whoa, maybe trusting people is the way to go after all. Maybe there's something to it. Well, it could be more like maybe like I was so, you know, self-centered in this pursuit that I failed to see like maybe this guy could be a decent human being, you know, because just because like he hid the bugster stuff doesn't mean like he's evil. Right. Um. So after that, we get back to the CR with the kid saying he doesn't like cakes. I don't know if that's a he doesn't like the cakes and his mother just didn't pay enough attention to him to actually know. Or he's upset over something. He's clearly upset over something. I, I don't know if he truly hates cake. Because really, who can hate cake? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think he might. Because earlier when they're asking what he likes, she said, uh, probably cakes. So he could actually hate cakes. <laughs> Yes. The problem with that, I find, is that she listed off a very specific cake. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's mad that, like, yeah, what happened is, like, maybe his mom always buys him that cake whenever he's upset, so he saw it and was like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> that cake had, like, a Christmas Santa on it, and he's mad yeah. at Christmas right now. So he was probably yeah. just mad at that. Yeah. We don't know why he's mad at Christmas. I'm sure we'll find out next episode. I'm sure if that cake had nothing to do with Christmas decoration I know, on it. I, I know I'm jumping ahead, but next episode's preview is weird. We'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know if anybody else noticed it. But the, in the next scene when they're up in the main room of the CR, the drawing on the whiteboard is adorable. Please tell me I'm not the only one. I couldn't help it. It's all mm -hmm. chibi fight and adorable. And like the Asuna on the Doremi Fa, I mean Poppy on the Doremi Fa beat machine. It's just adorable. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Ah. Uh, so yeah. Emu is afraid that he can't be like Kyotaro, who is, as he said before, the reason he became a doctor. I mean, I guess that's kind of a okay fear? I don't know. I mean, it sounds like he's super depressed about it. It's more just like, you know, he's starting to more and more realize that he can't really live up to his, to his idol. So he's kind of having like a bad week for two weeks. Three yeah. Weeks. Two weeks, I guess. The last time it was two part Uh. So. For some reason, I was fixated on the fact that his green tones are game clear. Uh. Just according to the notes. Uh. Then Dan wants Emu to transfer the patient. Transfer. Gosh. Because according to Dan, the health ministry is creating the virus. Which, for all we know, could be the truth. I don't think it is, but it could be. Technically, we don't know that much about Kyotaro. Or the health ministry in general. So, there could be some plausibility behind his words. 
But yeah, for the for the most part, it seemed to be a plan to lure him out there. Yeah. Well, the one thing data. I noticed uh, when Dan was saying goodbye to the office, and uh, in his Gashat case, he pretty much had all the the proto versions of the Gashat so far. So I don't think we've seen the last of those. I'm sure we haven't. Um, yeah, I think he's probably more like saying goodbye to like his old life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he can't just show up. He's supposed to be dead and the bad guy. For some reason, and I don't remember, I watched the episode yesterday and I don't completely remember it. I put down, what does Kyria believe in? I guess, believe in Dan or believe in the health department. I don't remember exactly. Somebody else who's watched the episode too, more recently, tell me what I meant. <laughs> what does Kyria believe in? Yeah. What Here, let, the... let's pull, pull up the episode. Oh, uh, well, I think you're talking maybe about more into the fight. Uh, yeah, I'm pulling up the episode. Uh, I don't think you hear anything he believes in. He just gives that speech to him. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, he just says, believe in yourself. I think that's what he was realizing. Oh. Oh, okay, here's why. Because he's having the flashbacks to, is there, a re is there a need for a reason to believe in somebody and that Ibn believes in uh, Kyoto Sensei? I, I, that's, that's, I guess why, that's why I put it. And so there's a, I guess, I don't know It might be just, was. uh, Kiria trusting Emu's instincts. Or something not, like that. Not being so questioning and suspicious of everyone. Right. Uh, so, we didn't show up in an abandoned skate park. With the patient, because supposedly the again on CEO told him to be there because to avoid being seen. I just want to say I really, basketball. I really like the first shot though, of the skateboard and the BMX bike just sitting there. I really like. There's a random that. basketball. Because you know, Shakariki Sports is gonna show up. I know, <laughs> but it's a skate park. And then there's a basketball. Well, it's Japan, so they're limited in space. It's probably like a combined park. Maybe. I don't know. It was weird. Okay. We are just talking about it. It had to be asked. So, uh, get him up here. He's level 3. And what's death data? Still don't know what that is. Still doubt we'll ever know what that is. Um, I know what it is, and I can explain to you when we get to the actual part. Okay. Uh... So, Emu goes full dragon, so just straight up Dragonite Hunter with all the pieces. Um, he's like, why are you doing this? And so he's doing it all under the instructions of Kyotaro Sensei, which fits with the earlier story. Uh, oh, such bullshit. <laughs> like, I can't believe he tried that. Like, who the hell would be dumb enough to actually try? I mean, I guess Emu, but like, if you tried that against any of the other three. Man, like, even Laser, who's not even so high up on Kyotro, would be like, you're full of shit. So, yeah. Uh, then the dragon freezes up, and Kyria comes in and knocks da uh, Emu out of the way of the Shakariki critical strike, saving him. And says, believe in yourself. And Emma gains control of the dragon. Uh, then Hero and Taiga appear. And Quad Dragon. See, I thought Laser called them. Because he's like, I'm probably going to be back up. This is a trap. Probably. I, I wasn't here last week to mention it. But I love the Quad Dragon transformation. It's just cool. I think it was yeah. even cooler this episode. With all the pieces flying off of Emu. That's just a really cool scene. I mean, I'm still not super... This is still like the weakest of damn forms, but... It's okay, I guess. Uh, I enjoyed the sounds more than the appearance, for sure. <laughs> hey, 
uh, Dan, or get him, then declares it's time to get the death data and fires the Shakariki sports at the boy, who Emu saves, and then shoots back at Dan, making his rider gauge drop to zero, which has been previously... Well, no, he actually does the Shakariki critical strike, which is actually the first time we see it. Which is basically Black x aids rider kick. Well, it's not the first time we see that rider kick. I think it's the first time we know what causes him to activate the rider kick. Because yeah. he hit laser with it. It's, uh, it's still not... really dumb. <laughs> what? The look or the... What do you mean? Uh, we're talking about the one where his like shoulder bike just boomerangs itself, no, right? No, no, just, just no, the no, kick. No, 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 we're talking about the rider kick. Not oh, the destructor disc. Just the kick? Oh. Yeah, the kick looks okay. But, yeah, the destructor disc is a little ridiculous. But, yeah, he saves the boy. Emily saves the boy and ends up hitting Yidam for the rest of his rider gauge. Yeah. See, I was thinking, like, because Black x or Genom, I guess, was losing so badly, and he saw, like, okay, there's four riders, I'm gonna lose this. The only way to go is to complete my plan is, okay, one of these geniuses has to go down. It's probably gonna be me at this point. And then he just targets the kid, because he knows, like, okay, if I tell Emu to finish me off, he's not gonna do it. Well, I wonder if the pro plan from the very beginning was to be defeated himself. I don't um, think so. I believe the plan was for him to be defeated. Uh, but once he was low on life, the others were, like, ready to just, like, you're done, you, we don't need to fight you anymore. He yeah. had to attack the kid to bait them. Right. Yeah. Right. Also, this is, like, the first time we figure out what the hell actually deflected the attack last episode, which is, he has, like, a tail move that Oh, but that annoys fire. me so much, because I actually went back to the last episode, and you don't see that tail come out. You see his wings, yeah. but no tail. Yeah. Um, well, at least they explained it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the rider gauge drops to zero. Uh, Danny's revealed to all as get him. It's kind of all scary in the, the scene. He, he's legitimately going insane. Well, he gets the death data first, before he Dehensions. Yeah, he does, but he still goes insane. Yeah. See, I don't think it's insane. I think it's more just he's like, well, whatever. Like, I'm gonna die anyway. Like, what the hell's the point? Or maybe he's just making sure that they see that he's pretty much dead. I don't know. It was kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, I know he's acting weird, but I don't think he's just going like off the deep end. Like, I think he can still function fairly well. Yeah. It's just like, he's at this point that, like, he gives a shit, like... He's showing his true colors. He, he then, yeah. He, he then says that he'd been using them as test players. Which, yeah, doesn't surprise me from everything we've seen. Uh, to create the ultimate game. Which I guess is supposed to be zombie? Um, no... That's not the ultimate game, I feel. It's just, like, the next step. I think he's trying to combine as many genres together. Uh. And, uh, that's what, like, the death data was. He needed the data of someone dying for the zombie effect. And he chose himself. And the because reason he, he didn't die actually anywhere. die is probably because of the gash act. He probably knew he could use it to keep him going. He is probably an, a zombie right now. Yeah. I, I, I sure got that feeling. That he's a zombie himself. Yeah, because he does infect himself with, like, more bugster stuff. So either he's, like, a zombie or he's turned, like, more bugster. So I don't know. Similar um, to how Graphite just injected the proto Dragonite Hunter Z, uh, yeah, Gashet yeah. into him, he's probably doing that. But through the uh, Bugster tool. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Is that since Salty came back and had a memory of his previous life, 
it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to think of Graphite coming back. I don't care. I don't know if I said it on the podcast, but I called it Graphite was the first to die. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so, yeah, Dan then claims that their game has only just begun since the virus has been implemented into a lot of people. Giving up, lining up for uh, next week, I guess, and new forms coming up. Like, maybe, yeah, because more people can become immune and then they can become riders. That's maybe. also true. Also, I... I was going to say one more thing about the zombie thing. It's like, the ultimate game is a zombie game because you could put a zombie mode in anything. Also, it says Dangerous Zombie on it. That's his name. Yeah. Uh, Dan tries to... I just put video game reference. Dan tried to flee, got away safely. <laughs> flee! It's a Pokemon joke. <laughs> I got it, I got it. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, he they, they go to their new secret base or whatever, and he pulls the new white gash out of the gamer driver, and it kind of the label oozes into existence, which is to be zombie, dangerous zombie. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Uh, and because the new game has finally started. And then we get to the preview, which is both the debut of a new Genom suit, floor, belt, everything, and the Christmas episode. I'm wondering if that's just a new rider altogether, maybe? Well, I guess we're going to get into a bit of spoilers here. I mean, the suit looked very different, is yeah, all well, I'm I saying. It's well, he uses the, the, the bug visor as the buckle to the belt. belt. Because the belt, the, the kind of belt piece that Graphite had been wearing is now like the underlying piece and the bug visor itself becomes the belt buckle for the new form. But it is a him. Yeah, see, I thought that was like he somehow gave it to x and it like infected him. No, that that's a new form of Genom. And it, we also, if you, I don't know, I, I never caught it running through, but I saw screenshots on Twitter. We also get a sports action gamer with X Aid next episode. Really? So the, the, the Shakariki sports form? X Aid gets to wear it next nice. episode. I was hoping someone would wear it next episode. So, this is something that I wonder about with the costume designs. Like, they wouldn't actually have a separate costume for this, would they? They would just have the. Uh, like, shoulder bike be an add-on that can attach, right? I don't yeah, know how... That. I don't know how rider suits work. I would think they would need a whole new helmet at the very least. I'm talking, like, yeah. as minimal differences as possible to save money. I... I, I don't know how the x suits work. Because I think the tires on Drive came off somehow. But I don't know how... Because we saw a behind-the-scenes photo. But I don't know how the x suits work. See, X8, I think it's just, uh, because the thing is, like, you're like, oh, no, X8, new suit, like, okay, they could just have the same stuntman for Genom, just put on the X8 suit, or whatever, like, it, it's probably, it just comes off. We don't know. Uh, because even the Buckster just have, like, the shoulder pad, and they have the same basic, because, I mean, we already had the same guy, right? The armor's can come off and just go on right. any suit. So it's they just need new helmets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, next episode, episode 12, is called The Stolen Snowy Christmas. Or as the English, that's in the title, because that's the title pattern, some Japanese and some English. It's written Xmas. Nice. Well, Japan does say Xmas. Yeah, I know. I just want to make note of that. So... That's really all I've got to say for this episode. Yeah, I really liked it. It felt almost like a movie, really, with all the plot developments and stuff. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, X8, for what felt like rushed story before, I'm glad that we're actually getting into real plot now. And, like, I'm glad that, like, we're getting past the uh, Christmas rush toy sales. 
Well, speaking of Christmas Rush toy sales, X-Aid's next form, next major form, his gas shack goes on sale this week, and I don't think it debuts in show, which surprises me. I would think they would try and push out the zombie game or stuff instead it of the new gas shack. I don't think yeah. it does. Okay, then that's weird. Um, also, like, it's probably because they're like, it's Christmas, kids are probably not going to buy the bad guy. Yeah, probably, something like that. And so get out a new hero toy. Get ahead of the market in the other direction. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his, uh, his hero powered up next form could just show up in the preview for next episode, and that's why maybe they're rushing. Maybe. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this episode was good. Like, when the kids showed up, I'm like, oh, God, no, not another one of these. Yeah, episodes. me too. <laughs> but at least this kid was really, for the most part, after he got his annoying stuff out of the way, he was pretty decent. And not there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the kid was hardly in the episode. I know, it was amazing, and we're going to be stuck with him all next episode, because he hates Christmas, and it's the Christmas episode. It actually airs on December 25th in Japan. Oh, that's cool. What was also clever is they remember, alright, um, you know, whenever somebody gets possessed, they run, which is stupid, but they also remember Oh shit, this kid has a cast. Yeah. So after a while, like when the Buckster goes away, like he immediately drops to the ground. Right. I was like, ah, that's clever. Also that scene where it's like, I'm awakened, man. You know, I've taken over this kid's body. Oh god, that scene was freaking hilarious. Like, fear me. <laughs> you know, it's just Nobody's scared scene. of you, Salty. Nobody's scared right. of you. Right, and it's just this kid, I'm like, oh my god. If, I mean, in the show we can see the effect. In real life, imagine that happening, I'd be fucking hungry. <laughs> right. But otherwise, yeah, this this episode was pretty good. Pretty, you know what? This show, more than any other show right now, or the last couple of years, amazing pacing. You know, it seems fast because you want more. Not because... Why, why, why'd you have to say that? Because now they're going to completely screw with the pacing. Just because you said that. You've jinxed us, Zero. You've jinxed us. <laughs> no, I've been jinxing us since the first time we talked about this, saying it's good and it's stuck with me. Like, even the episodes I say are bad end up being decent. I stand by my opinion that, um, last time when we got the, uh, all four of them using Dragonite Hunter Z. That felt yeah. like a mid-season team up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guy, going back to guy, guy almost seemed like it had four different finales, which was weird. I think it's because um, Urubuchi is used to working on smaller shows, so yeah, he basically wrote shows. the arcs as like entire shows, which is stupid, but. Yeah, it, it does sort of seem like an entire arc ends, but it ends like the wrong way instead of build up. It's like all oh, this major thing and boom. Like it's too much of a finale when the arcs end, sort of. Yeah, this just seemed like a mid season finale almost. The the dragon episode with like we're going to a Christmas break here. Have something big to leave off of. Yeah, it seemed more like uh they're either learning from Western shows or this show is just written that low. It's like you know, oh, this is the Christmas break, you know, mid-season finale thing. Like, that the CW superhero shows just yeah. had. It basically felt like that. Where it's like, alright, this is the big thing, but they also then set up for the next thing. Right. They're doing it well. Instead of, like, just killing all their momentum, building up to this insane thing, and then you're like, what happens next? This show was kind of an interesting pace. Like, its stories continue, but like almost all the episodes are single parties. I mean, we've had two double episodes. This is kind of almost a double parter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the last one and this one, and I'm like, okay, are we just going to start turning into two parters because that might just kill the momentum going forward? But 
It's probably because it's a Christmas episode. That's probably why they're doing it. And plus, last week's two episodes needed them. Well, I hope this one's good. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of doing the fight. Because that's not true. It sort of feels like it's doing the Fies thing, where it's like one continuous story. Except the way Fies did it was kind of the cheap way, where it's like they end the fight right at the end in the next episode. Like the first two minutes are just finishing the fight, which was bullshit. <laughs> And this is the right way of doing it, where it's like they're continuing the subplot, but like the episodes are self-contained, unless they're two-parters. But even the two-parters seem fairly, you know, self-contained. I know what you're talking about. When Fies like freaks out on Kaiza that first time, and, and they then just like, the episode there. and then they just end the episode in the middle of it, and then the next episode starts up, and it's over. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I know, right? So many. I'm like, I like flies, but it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, man, you are writing this so stereotypically with the, okay, I'm gonna throw in the hook now, because Tawe is forcing me to put a fight in every single episode, so I'm just gonna put it right at the end, where it's just gonna lead up to the next episode's fight, so I can eat up some of the time, you know. Because, like, you could pretty much just cut out the beginning and the end of most Fies episodes because they're boring fights that most of them don't need to be in the show. And, like, the actual story of Fies happens at the middle. Fies was more of a drama anyways. I know, it was pretty good. Uh, I mean, its pacing is terrible, but it's a good show. So, anything else to say about the episode? It was a good episode. It was. It really sets a it sets the bar high for what's to come, though. So I hope that they don't drop the ball. Next up, ep- next episode's weird because they're doing both the Christmas and a heavy plot point at the same time, and it's like, hey, we've I'm had serious. too many cheery Christmas episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Let, it... let's have one where someone fucking dies. <laughs> But, but it has, it's both a cheery Christmas episode and the episode where somebody had. Yeah, Kabuto. Well, hey. that's not true. Kabuto is the saddest freaking episode. Yeah, let's see if this tops that. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening. Bye. Later. <laughs>